Hey guys, welcome to your next tutorial and happy Christmas Eve for those of you who celebrate Christmas. Uh, now what we're going to do today is we're going to enhance our uh, Particle 2D and Particle Batch uh, 2D uh, classes by allowing us to specify some custom functionality. So right now we just have this uh, update function in Particle 2D that does something very simple. It just updates the position and velocity. But what if we want to make particles that do something unique? What if we don't want to always have particles doing the exact same thing? Like maybe, for instance, we want our blood particles to fade out instead of just disappearing. So what we could do is we could, you know, fade out the alpha component of the color. Well, there's a few ways we could do that. We could uh, make Particle Batch 2D some kind of interface, and then we could inherit from it and define custom functionality that way, but that's a lot of work to just change this one little update function. And what we could also do is we could uh, make a subclass of Particle 2D and use polymorphism uh, with our uh, in particles down here. But however, if we did that, we would probably lose our cache coherency because since we're using polymorphism, we're going to have to store every individual particle as a pointer, and that's not going to be good for performance. So what is another alternative? Well, Another thing we can do is use what are called function pointers. Now, function pointers are pretty scary for people new to C++, but you guys are this far along, so you're probably uh, plenty confident that, that you're going to be able to do this. So let's go ahead and get started uh, with some function pointers. And I'm also going to teach you lambdas, which are just another way of creating function pointers. And we're going to be using, of course, the C++11 syntax. So what is a function pointer? Well, it's a pointer to a function. Pretty basic. So what we're going to do is... Uh, first thing we're going to do is get rid of our update function in Particle 2D. Uh, what we're going to do instead is whenever we create a particle batch, we're going to tell the particle batch how it should behave. We're going to tell it how it should update its particles. And to do that, first we're going to just strip out all of the update functionality in uh, the Particle 2D. And what we're also going to do uh, is rename these variables. We're going to go ahead and make them public variables. This is basically just going to be data. It's not going to have any functions associated with it. Uh, instead, the update is going to be performed with Particle Batch 2D. So I'm going to use Visual Assist uh, to rename these uh, so that they don't have the M in front of them. Uh, if you don't have Visual Assist, you'll have to do it manually. Uh, but of course, I do really recommend that you guys get Visual Assist because it's an awesome, awesome uh, little tool. Uh, I'm sure I've told you guys this like a million times. Uh, two more. Here we go. Life and width. Uh, there we go. All right, so now these are public variables. Of course, it's a little bit more unsafe, but right now the only thing actually touching Particle 2D is Particle Batch uh, 2D. So there's... There's really no nothing unsafe going on right now. Like uh, it, we can just use common sense and not use particle two D anywhere else. Public var public variables are not inherently bad. They can just they can end up being bad if if you use them too much. All right. So now what we need to do is whenever we initialize the particle batch two D, we need to tell it. Uh, how we want it to update the particles. And to do that, we're going to pass it a function pointer. Now to get function pointers, what we need to do is include functional at the top like that. Now we have access to function pointers. And the way we declare a function pointer is we come here and we say, get that out of the way, std colon colon function. And then we do template arguments because it's a template. And we're going to say what kind of function it is. If we wanted it to be just a void function, we would say void uh, with parentheses, just like that. Uh, if we wanted it to be a void function that took an integer, we could say void int. If we wanted it to be a void function that took an integer and a float, we could do that. It's pretty basic, uh, it's pretty basic syntax. Now, if we wanted it to be a member function, that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, you have to pass, uh, for the very first argument, you have to pass what type of uh, uh, class that you're going to be using for that member function. For instance, say we wanted a member function for particle 2D, we would have to say particle 2D uh, ampersand here. Actually, const particle 2D ampersand if we wanted it to be constant. But that's not what we're going to do. I'm going to put a link in the description that goes over function pointers in more detail and lambdas in more detail. So you guys can go look at that. Right now we're just going to be using function pointers in one specific way. And that is to give some custom functionality to our particle 2D. So what kind of function is the update function? Well, it's a void function. And then what parameters does it take? Well, let's, let's take a particle 2D. We'll say particle 2D reference. And we're going to update the particle 2D we pass in there. And then we also need, of course, the delta time. So we're going to say float here. That's for the delta time. And this will be func. So that is the, uh, we'll say update func. Now that is the update function that is going to uh, run whenever we update all of our particles. Now we also need to store that function somewhere. 
So we're going to go ahead and make a private variable for that. And we'll say m update func in the particle batch 2D. Now let's copy this into our CPP file. So we'll go to particle batch 2D.cpp and come up to the init and just put it in just like it was in the header file. Uh, there we go. And we just need to now uh, set it appropriately. So we're going to say m update func equals update func. Like that. Now, uh, what this is going to do now is it's going to require us uh, to, whenever we create a uh, particle batch 2D, it's going to require us to also pass in a function pointer for the update function. However, we don't always necessarily want to do that. Sometimes maybe we want to use just a default uh, function pointer uh, for updates. So what we could do is we can implement our uh, simple update function here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. This was our old particle 2D update. I'm going to go ahead and grab that, bring it out to the header file, I'll just put it right above here. Get rid of particle 2D update, and we're just going to call this default particle update. And this will be the default update function. And let's actually put it below particle 2D so we don't have to do a forward declaration for particle 2D. Now, when, if we want to use this function for our update, we have to make sure the signatures match here. We also need to be passing in a particle 2D reference in addition to the delta time. So we'll just pass in particle 2D particle, like that. And then here we can say particle.position plus equals particle.velocity times delta time. So this is going to be our default update function. And as you know, we can use default parameters. So what we can do is here in the init function right here, we can just say equals default particle update. And that will set up our default update function. So if we initialize the particle patch 2D, just like we always have, it's going to behave exactly the same way. Now, if we go into the C++ file, one thing I like to do, uh, you'll know that whenever you use default parameters, you don't, uh, you don't put the equals in the C++, C++ file. It'll give you an error. However, you can do this. You can say a comment and then equals default particle update, just so that whoever's reading the C++ file will remember that there is a default uh, parameter there. All right, now finally, we just need to use the update function. So all we do is here, instead of calling mparticlesi.update, we're going to say mUpdateFunk, and we're going to say uh, for the first argument, it's going to be mParticlesI, and for the second argument, it's going to be delta time. And then we can get rid of this update function call right here. All right, so now, because we use the default parameter in the particle batch uh, 2D.h, or uh, the particle engine... Here it is, particle batch 2d.h. Since we use the default function, we should be able to run this and it should behave exactly the same way. However, now we're using the function pointer and we have the ability to define some custom functionality. So let's go ahead and run it and make sure we don't have any errors. And then I'll show you how we can actually define some of our own uh, custom functions. Uh, first, using just the normal function pointer approach and then using a lambda. And uh oh. So we have default particle update already defined. One second. Ah. Whenever you are using a header file, a function that is declared in a header file like this, that's just kind of randomly declared, you have to always put the inline keyword in front. Otherwise, it's going to give you some kind of weird error like this whenever multiple files try to uh, include it. So now if we run it, it should work just fine. There we go. We are generating code. Let's see if everything works out. There we go. So we still have, uh, we have blood and all that. Everything's working just fine. All right. Now let's go ahead and define some custom update methods. So to do that, we just need to go to where we initialize our particle batch. Uh, and uh, what we need to do is pass in a different update function there. So I believe we do that in main game. I believe we initialize the particle batch. Here we go, we have m blood particle batch equals new binge and particle batch, and then we call init here. So this last parameter right here is where we're going to put our uh, function pointer for our custom update function. Now there's a few ways we could do this. Now the first way would be to just pass another update function just like before. Uh, so what we could do is we could come right to here above main game init systems or somewhere random and we could say void uh, update blood particle. And of course, the first parameter is going to be bingen particle 2D ampersand particle. 
or we'll say p. And then the second parameter is going to be float delta time. All right, and now let's go ahead and make it behave pretty much the same way as this one, except we'll do something a little different. Let's go back into main game. So we're going to add uh, to the position, and it's this, this, we'll rename it particle, whatever. So this will add to the position, but let's also uh, change the alpha. Let's make it fade out. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say particle dot, uh, let's see, color dot A. And that is a byte, so it's going to be 0 to 255. We want to scale this down to 0 as life decreases. So what we can do is we can say equals life, or particle dot life times 255. And we'll do it like this. We'll do a floating multiplication here. So particle.life is a float. And then out of the parentheses, we'll just cast it to a GLU byte, since that is the type uh, that we use for our RGBA. Now we have a custom update uh, blood particle function that's going to change the alpha. So if we come down here for this final parameter here, we can put update blood particle here to replace the normal functionality. And this line's getting a little long, so I'm going to split it up into multiple lines here. It's good practice to do that. All right, now let's run it, and let's see if our blood particles fade out. All right, let's pull out the machine again. As you can see, it looks much better now. The blood particles actually use alpha fade, and they, instead of abruptly disappearing, they fade out, it's awesome. And that was pretty easy to do. Now I'm going to show you one more way to specify, we'll do pretty much the same function here. And that is a lambda. Now a lambda is a way for you to uh, pass a update function or, or, or a function pointer to uh, something without having to actually define the function in your CPP file. So if we were going to keep doing this and we had like 100 different update functions, we would probably want to make a separate header file for them like uh, particle updates and all of our update functions would go there so that we don't clutter our main game.cpp. But we can avoid both of those if we use a lambda instead. So in order to specify a lambda, the syntax is really weird. And, and what a lambda is, is it's basically an inline declaration of a function. So bear with me here. The first thing we need to do for our lambda is we're going to go ahead and get rid of this third parameter here. And we're going to declare our lambda here. What we're going to do is we're going to say square brackets and then a space, and then uh, parentheses, and then a space, and then finally we do curly braces for the body of our function. Now our function is going to go inside these curly braces. So first thing we want to do, and you don't actually need a space there, uh, first thing we need to do is specify the parameters, and we're going to put them in this, uh, these parentheses right here. So it's going to be the same parameters as before. We're going to copy these two and paste them down here, like that. And that will pass in particle and delta time. And then finally, we need to just pa paste in the uh, update the logic. So we'll grab that and paste it in here. And that's that. So that is a lambda. Now, it looks really ugly looking, uh, but it's actually kind of elegant. What we're doing here is we're defining the custom functionality in line with our initialized function. So we don't need any extra code anywhere else. So we can get rid of that. And now it's nice and clean. So let's go ahead and run it and see if the same thing happens. All right, and we are generating code, didn't get any errors. Hopefully the blood particles will still fade out, and indeed they do. So now you know the basics of lambdas and function pointers. Uh, there's a few things you can do with these square brackets right here. They're not here just for show. Uh, whenever you have square brackets that have nothing in them, that means we're just not going to use any outside variables. However, what I could do is I could say, we'll say int a equals 100. I don't know, this is just some random variable. Uh, if I wanted to use A inside my lambda, I actually could use A if I make a few changes in here. If I wanted to pass in A by uh, value, I would put equals here. And now I can use A in here. We could, I don't know, multiply by A here, which doesn't really, which would multiply our speed by 100, which we don't really want to do. And, uh, oh, yeah, A needs to be a float for that because we're multiplying by a vector. All right, so now, as you can see, I passed in an A. Uh, just using this equals, this basically tells the lambda, hey, if I use any outside variables, just pass them in 
uh, by value, make a copy. We can also pass them in by reference if we put an ampersand here. And now A is going to be used by reference. And actually that's going to be really, really bad because A is a stack variable and you can't, you don't want to pass in a reference to a stack variable since whenever this function returns it's going to be, uh, it's going to be in uninitialized mem or, uh, unallocated memory. So uh, I hope this was helpful to you. There's a few more things you can put in here. Uh, and there's also some information on how to do function pointers and lambdas for member functions. Uh, I will put all that information in the description of the video for you to do further reading if you need to use those. Otherwise, all you'll need is these basic uh, uh, void function uh, pointers that we've made here. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.